Welcome to the Trinity County Historical Society's Museum in Weaverville, California. I'm Kathy Smith and I'm one of the uh, attendants here that uh, visit with the folks that come to the museum. We're open daily from April through October about. Uh, during the winter time, of course, we have too much uh, snow and rain so that we're open just limited hours during the January, February and March time. Uh, December we have less hours but we are still open daily. We have a research center which is open uh, daily. Our museum is basically the things that some of our pioneers have left to us. Weaverville was founded in 1850. We were a town and a county when California became a state in 1850. Uh, many of the things that are around in the museum uh, are of great significance in historical value as in as well as monetary value. That's why we have extra alarms here. Um, Weaverville is a pioneer town as I said. In this case is one example. Uh, Joseph Craig came from the East Coast in the 1850s and from what we can tell was the only person who actually manufactured weapons in Trinity County. Three of these weapons were actually made here. They're 50 caliber and, and that sort of style of uh, weaponry. Two on the top actually have Weaverville stamped in the uh, barrel of the gun. To us they're, they're invaluable. To other people they are very valuable. We are having a just a uh, small display of his uh, weaponry. We also have additional uh, weapons of his that are not on display. They're in, in our storage area. It's, this is Joseph Craig with a C. Many people can mistake him for Joseph Craig with a K. But uh, his uh, rifles, these are American rifles. The museum also uh, is a gold rush community museum. We have some remnants of the uh, gold findings uh, in the way of jewelry, some placer gold. We have displays on how gold mining was accomplished in Trinity County. We had large hydraulic mining here. In the 1900 to 1910 time frame, we had a couple named LaGrange who had a huge mine. In 1900, they took a million dollars a year out of their mine. In those, the money from that time was be far in excess of anything we have now. So over a period of 10 years, they took out 10 billion or 10 million dollars. Uh, the castle, which is was the home, is gone now, but there are still a few things. We in fact have some doors from the library that are stained glass that came uh, with the building of what they called the castle on the on the mountain. We have references to the Indian heritage of Trinity County. We have baskets, we have uh, bows and arrows, we have arrowheads, all of which were found in this area. We also have minerals and uh, mollusks and other types of sea creatures who inhabited this area. Although we're at a popular, or an, an elevation of 2,000 feet, the ocean was here. And we found remnants of that just within the 10 mile radius of Weaverville. We also have uh, the remnants of a woolly mammoth or mastodon in our museum. Uh, we're found seven miles from here. Uh, there are rumors that there are others that have been found that we don't have in the museum. But uh, uh, we have children who come on tours. They, uh, are usually studying uh, the gold rush era uh, in the fourth grade. So we have lots of school children coming. That's one of the things we show. We show them how to pan gold. We also show them we have a Regina music box. And it's probably one of the original disc players, but I would hate to uh, be the one to carry the discs around because they're about three feet in diameter. This is the orchestral Regina. I'm not sure of the age, but I know that it's at least from the late 1800s. And as you can see in, in the uh, glass, there is a disc. We also show the children 
the one of the discs which we can't use at this present time because it's damaged. But I would not want to be the one to carry this around to uh, change when I was changing the music in the Regina. It's very popular. Uh, it still works. It costs a quarter and the children always get to experience that when they come to visit. They also are very impressed with what is right here in front of you. This is a replica of one of the lookouts that we had. It was built in the 30s during the CCC time uh, and had to be removed because being wooden it was beginning to fail. It has been removed and is in the fairgrounds near here and a new uh, lookout tower has been built, much more sturdy on metal rather than on wood. Uh, we've recently experienced a lot of uh, fires, but they're out. We really welcome you to come and visit our museum. Again, we're open year-round uh, from April through December. We're open daily. Uh, limited hours in November and December. We're open uh, two days a week, January, February, and March, noon to four. Those are Tuesdays and Saturdays. We also have a website. You can go to trinitymuseum.org and we have lots of information there. We have access to some of our archives. Uh, if you're a researching family who've ever visited or who lived in Trinity County, we probably have some reference to them. We have an extensive library and we have folks who work in there five days a week. It's, uh, we have a great research, we're a county seat, we've been a county seat since 1850, so we have a lot of historical records of things that have gone on in Trinity County. It's not just a Weaverville, it's a Trinity County. We also have historic homes. Across the street we have a church that has been here since the late 1800s. Our Catholic church is over 100 years old. It's a great town to come and spend an afternoon or spend a weekend. We have a couple of bed and breakfasts as well as hotels that would love to have you come and visit. We also would love to have you come and see our museum. Uh, there's no charge. We ask for a donation if you have it, but we encourage you to come and see what the history of the gold rush would be in the present state. Uh, we have lots of things. So come on, enjoy it. Visit us. All right, and